So sister, what do you really think of your room? I got Christmas music playing. We got some drop cloths down and got my paintbrush. And it is time to transform this space. Three months ago, my sister came to me desperate for help with her bedroom. She was tired of looking at her lavender walls that were painted that color when she bought the home a few years ago. She did not know what she wanted to do with this space, but she knew the lavender walls had to go. Today, you are gonna get to see what we have been doing to transform this space over the last three months. And the best part is that we did it with all thrifted finds. First coat is on. I got all the edges cut. Jesse got the rolling done and we're getting started on the second coat already. It's gonna look completely different. It already does. So excited. I can't wait for her to see it. Second coat is pretty much done. I've got a little tiny bit more trim to do, but we are calling it a night and I will get this finished up tomorrow. It's a completely different room than it was just a few hours ago. It's wild. It's amazing what paint can do. One of my main goals when my sister came to me and asked me to help with this was I really wanted this space to be done with an attainable budget. I was so excited that my sister gave me the green light to buy secondhand and thrifted items for this makeover. My sister has never really gotten into thrifting or buying items secondhand. This is an opportunity for me to show her that you can have secondhand items and your space isn't gonna look used. Buying secondhand often means that your space is actually going to have more character and it's gonna look more unique. As I've been out thrifting for items for my online vintage store, I have been picking up things for my sister's bedroom over the last few months. My number one tip if you are looking to decorate a space with thrifted finds is to be patient. Thrifting a beautiful space can absolutely be done completely secondhand, but it does take time and patience. There are so many places that you can source secondhand finds. With the internet, you can now shop on eBay and Etsy and Poshmark and so many other websites. Go hit that thrift store, find those rummage sales, and don't forget about Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist. And if you are open to repurposing and DIYing some of your project, thrifting gives you endless options. But the most important thing is just have fun with your design. Don't take it too serious and just enjoy the process. Obviously, I will be switching out the photos and be putting in some art and also some pictures of them from their trips to the Philippines. But here's kind of an example of how I'm gonna use mixed matched frames to create a unique gallery wall that she can easily add pieces to from thrift stores and everything will just kind of be mixed and matched together. I think that just makes it so much easier to add pieces to over time for a really low cost. Today I'm working on getting some of the photos that I got printed added to the frames for a little bit of a gallery wall. Now, originally I was actually planning on mixing wood tones, but after printing all the photos in black and white and seeing how amazing the black accents throughout the room look, I think I actually wanna leave this lighter wood, but I wanna paint these two black. And I printed one of my favorite pictures of Milani at the beach. She is a complete beach girl. She loves the beach. This is uh, Rockaway Beach at the Oregon coast. And I don't know if you knew this, but you can actually spray paint matting. And so I'm gonna take this green matting out. We're gonna spray paint that black, leave this wood, put the beautiful black and white photo in there. And I think that's really gonna pop having this black. And we're gonna go ahead and take out this artwork from Goodwill and paint these two frames black. And I think that's gonna look really nice once we've got the black and white photos in there and it will tie in with the black matting. These three are gonna get all put together on a wall 
And I've got a few more fun photos over here that I printed that are gonna go in those. Do any of you know what day this was? It was actually featured in a YouTube video about a year and a half, almost two years ago. I would love to know if any of you remember this day. If you do, mention what was so exciting about this day, why we had such big smiles in the comments below. It was a very special day, I'll just leave it at that. And the reason that I also have this pot over here is that we are gonna paint this too. It is not gonna stay that color, and I didn't end up finding a basket that I liked enough, so we're just gonna paint it black. Frames are painted. Now I'm thinking that I'm gonna take some of this plastic drop cloth to kind of tie up and protect all of the faux plant. I've already got one on the little table base so that I could have it raised up to make it easier to spray paint. Hopefully this works. Now we just let them dry. I can't wait to get these hung. It's gonna look really good now that everything's gonna match. Well, I am waiting for the paint to dry, <laughs> literally. I'm gonna use some of this peel and stick wallpaper for this section up here above the door that goes to their back patio. The reason that it's painted purple, which by the way, what a difference in color, right? <laughs> but the reason it's painted purple is because it is actually glass. And we are assuming that whoever lived here previously didn't want the light coming in through the window because it kind of shines right onto the bed. So my sister didn't want that either. So I decided instead of scraping it off or just painting it the green color, we're gonna add a pretty little accent and kind of make a feature with it. All right, little helper, okay. here is your task. Take a look at these beautiful Monet pictures. We have to pick four. I really like this one. I like the light colors. Okay, that's a great reason. And like how how there's more, like there's in not just a background, but some flowers and lily pads. And I like how the water is colorful like that. Perfect. That is a winner. I really like this one because of the light color sky in the background. And it's got such a pretty purple. Yeah. What's your next favorite? Oh, I like this because of the grassy fields in the background. <laughs> Perfect. I like what you're picking so far. All right, now is the really hard part. One, that's upside down, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I like Which one this do you like better? One. That one? That one's kind of plain, but this one's less plain because of all the lily pads and the beautiful water. Love it. This one does have beautiful water, but I don't like the color of the water. The yeah, it kind of looks like dirty water, doesn't it? Yeah, like kind of like a creek. Well, yeah, like a creek. All right, there it is. Those are the four we are going to use. I like your choices. I think you made the right ones. Good job. You're going to be an interior designer after all. <laughs> Did I mess it up? No, it's perfect. I love this picture. What are you writing? A unicorn. That is so cute. It was disguised as a, it was a horse disguised as a unicorn. Bonnie's face is doing there. She's oh my like, gosh. Got her little head on You guys are hanging out with Neville Longbottom. Yeah. How what? exciting. That's Neville Longbottom. And Mr. Malfoy. Malfoy. Oh my gosh, this is too much fun. She's Here we are, right? sisters in Disneyland. There are many mouse ears. This is too much fun. This worked out really well. I thought I was going to have to paint this, but look at that. Boom. Done. Don't even have to paint it. That's, that's a little bit higher. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> perfect. It's going to be perfect. We're going to test it out, flip the breaker, see if it works. There you go. There it is. It works. Oh, that's so exciting. Switch off. <laughs> it looks so much prettier lit up too. Perfect. Look at the shadow that it casts. The downsides of buying from Goodwill is I assumed that these rods would go together, but they do not. All four sides are exactly the same size, so none of them fit inside the other ones. You can't put them together, and neither of these are long enough by themselves. The good news is my sister has another black curtain rod in the dining room that she's not really using, and we're going to be able to use these rings with the curtain still, which I really like, so that you can actually see the black curtain rod. There are downsides to buying secondhand sometimes.
So sister, what do you really think of your room? I'm obsessed. You're obsessed? I'm obsessed. You did so good. Thank you. I love all the little details. To me, it's like I don't really have a specific style, I would say. But I like when you see something and you know you love it. And I feel like you picked all these pieces and found things that I love. Really? Yeah. I'm Honestly. so happy. I was a little bit nervous. So when Aaron first asked me to do this makeover, well, for one, that was years ago at a different house. <laughs> but when she first asked me to do it here at this home for reals, she said, just do white walls or cream walls, mm -hmm. something neutral. Yeah. Well, what was it that you said? I just, I wanted like an easy out. Like, yes. Just get something done. And I felt like white was just easy, neutral. So many of you saw me start thrifting items that were very colorful. And I was like, okay, she wants white walls. We're gonna do this. I'm gonna just bring the color in with the decor. And as I started thrifting things, it just wasn't sitting right with me. There was something about it. I was like, this isn't right. I know my sister. And even though I know you say you don't have style, you do. You just needed the time and like a little bit of help, I think, to bring this out. And I just said, I'm going for it. I'm gonna start with a dark wall and I'm gonna build this out from there. And I love, I love bold colors. Like that's why I picked those orange sheets. Like <laughs> I love bold colors and I just couldn't see how you could put together a room without just white walls and things that are bold colors, mm -hmm. but you made it work. It's so funny because I was really excited about doing something that was really outside my comfort zone and something that was completely different than my style. And I do think that there's a lot of Laura in here and I tried really hard not to do that. But they're the pieces of <laughs> Laura that I love. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> they <laughs> are though, but like each of the pieces that I think look more very Laura, they're ones that I love, so. Good. Well, you've always complimented my home. I know you're not like walking into my house being like, ew, ugly sister. <laughs> so I felt I mean, pretty sometimes. comfortable with it. But I really wanted it to represent you and Ellery and Milani. And yeah. there were a couple really fun ways that I found to do that in this space. One of them was by introducing Monet paintings. Do you want to tell them why I got Monet paintings for you? Yes. Um, I love Claude Monet. I studied a lot of art history in college and um, Claude Monet is one of my favorite artists. And we actually named Named my daughter Milani Monet. Isn't that the prettiest name you've ever heard? <laughs> Milani Monet. Also, Eminem. I thought I was gonna call her Eminem before she was born, and I've never heard any of us call her. No, M &M. we don't call her Eminem. No. <laughs> but I love Monet, so it's always been something special. Um, Milani too. Like I have some little Monet kids books that are super cute and she loves. And yeah. It ended up working out really well with the wall color too and that part I actually didn't plan. Though Monet was kind of a last minute thing. I was really trying to figure out how I was going to introduce art on the walls. I knew I wanted photos because you have a beautiful family and I wanted to make sure that those pictures got printed and were displayed. But I also wanted some texture and some art on the walls and I was just like what am I going to do? I can't do some something too current. Right. I didn't want to do something too trendy, right. but all of a sudden it just came to me and I was like, Monet, that's what we're going with. So this is the original Monet art piece. I got it from France. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I got this Real. from Etsy and yes. I'm hoping that this is the beginning of a mm -hmm. Monet gallery wall. Yes. So I figured we could start small. Yes. <laughs> And then as you, over time, maybe find them at antique stores, yes. not that you antique shop, but as you find them Maybe I will stores. get her to go antique shopping more with me after this space. We can kind of keep introducing more and more of those. And I yeah. think it would just be so beautiful to have a collection of four or five different Absolutely. Monet paintings. I really didn't want to do any prints just because I like original artwork, even if it's not by Claude Monet. I don't like prints. So we're good. Yeah. We agree on that. But then what was really funny was when we started pulling out mm -hmm. um, like pictures and stuff, she texted me a picture of some Monet prints that I thrifted mm -hmm. at Goodwill before Milani was born, after mm -hmm. they had selected that name. So we are gonna actually be adding those to this wall here today. And they might just be prints yes. for now, but eventually um, you'll have a bunch of original artwork. Yes. And I know what I'm gonna get her for Christmas every year now. <laughs> Sweet, then I don't need to go thrifting with you. <laughs> Wow. 
One of the questions I got after we showed everyone the initial bedroom, the before, was when is the bedroom makeover going to be finished? <laughs> yeah, Laura, <laughs> when is it going to be finished? So I got like 80% done while my sister was traveling in the Philippines during that three weeks. Yeah. Jesse came over and helped me. We got this entire room painted. We got the bed put together. We got the majority of it done, but there was a couple things that I just couldn't find thrifting. And I'm always talking about like, just thrift it. So I was very determined to do this entire space secondhand. And the one thing I could not find was the light fixture. It took me almost three months of looking on Facebook Marketplace every day. But uh, you found the perfect light fixture. Oh, I'm so glad. Like it's my favorite thing. Oh my gosh, it's in the whole room? In the whole room. I love that. I think the yeah. painting here is up there. That's up there? Yeah. Well, I didn't know exactly what I was looking for, but I knew I would know as soon as I saw it. And I did find a few things on Etsy and eBay that were beautiful and amazing, but we're talking five, six, seven hundred dollars with shipping. So I was determined to find it for a good price too, because part of the thing with this space was we wanted to do it secondhand to be sustainable and to show that it can be done on a budget. But also we were not looking to spend thousands of dollars. Everything in this room has been thrifted secondhand and for just a few hundred dollars, I I think mm -hmm. if you put everything together, um, the bed was the most expensive thing. Yeah, but that's always going to be. Yeah, even secondhand, she got a gently used bed and we'll tell you about that story in just a second. <laughs> Years ago, Laura and I lived in a house together, actually with our husbands. We All did. All four of us yeah. lived together in a house and Laura was in this phase, she was thrifting even way back then. And she, we're talking like mid 2000s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was super into like painting everything black. <laughs> I like, didn't go through that face. you would thrift <laughs> picture frame, and I would come home and I'd be like, Where's Laura? And she'd be out back, <laughs> a bunch of things on the ground, painting them all black. And I would always just come out and be like, I want to paint it black. <laughs> well, this was Correct kind of funny. Up. You were completely correct. And I did paint a lot of things black. In my very early days of thrifting, one, I didn't have the eye for mid-century modern or high quality made pieces. And I was just picking up whatever I could find, whether it was at a garage sale, a rummage sale, or at a thrift store. And that was my way of making everything match. I think when I was younger, I thought everything had to match. Yeah. Where now I realize that a lot of beauty with design is kind of pulling in lots of different things that work together. And I didn't know how to do that when I was younger. Yeah. So I just painted everything black and I was like, that looks good. And that was $5 <laughs> for everything. So this was kind of funny that I ended up painting things black in your space because I hadn't done that in a long time. <laughs> she painted it black. Aaron trusted me with the majority of this room, but a bed is very important because you sleep on it every night. And she has a young child who comes in here and watches movies sometimes and sleeps in the bed. So she really wanted something that had an upholstered headboard. Yeah. So she wasn't hitting her head or Milani hitting their heads on a, you know, cool, funky, yeah. mid-century modern piece that just yeah. wasn't practical. So I texted my sister a picture of a bed that looked really similar to one I'd seen on a Pinterest board of hers. And she was like, that's it. That's exactly what I want. We were both so excited. So, excited. so we went to go pick it up. You excited to see your new bed? I'm so excited. <laughs> yes. We get it. I sat in the garage for a while because it took me a while to do the project. <laughs> But we had the bed. We had and the it was bed. In the garage for a while. And we knew what it yeah. looked like because we had a photo of it all yeah. set up from like the internet before it was purchased brand new. Yeah. You guys, we found this the second day looking online. So there is just no reason to buy brand new. I'm telling you, she wanted something contemporary. We found it for her in perfect condition. Huge savings and it's second hand. Yay. All right. So it didn't fit inside the car, but we think we have a plan. When there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> Are you doing an arm workout? Just another day. <laughs> Jessie and I pulled that out. She's in the Philippines on vacation, so I'm not wanting to bug her with anything. <laughs> Jessie and I start setting it up, and we both look at it and we're like, where's the rest of the bed? Why is it sitting on the floor? Why is this like two feet high? <laughs> so I'm kind of panicking. I'm like, something's missing, something's wrong. I gotta go back and look at this listing. These people were moving to Florida three months ago. There's no way they're still around. Yeah. So I'm thinking that we're missing hardware, we're missing feet, something is wrong. And I go back and I'll look at the listing pictures. That's what it looks like in the picture. Wrong. It's exactly wrong. what the picture shows. <laughs> exactly what the picture shows. The bed is really, really low and it sits directly on the floor, including the headboards. 
And somehow we totally missed that. Totally missed it. It looks so good in the photo and it does. It looks good. It looks really good, honestly. It just was in your head and somehow like mm -hmm. was what you thought to it was be this be. tall, big, yeah. I didn't film the like <laughs> partial reveal the night that she got home. Well, that's because we've just been on a plane for like 24 hours. Yeah, I wasn't going to do that to my midnight. sister. I, can, I love my sister too much to do that to her. Oh, like, here, let me put a camera in your face. You've been traveling for 24 hours and your bed's on your floor two feet high. <laughs> how do you feel? <laughs> I just want to go to bed. What is this bed? So um, how do you feel about the bed now? I honestly, I love it. I look in like from the bathroom and I'm brushing my teeth. I look in and I'm like, oh, it just, it looks like a magazine. It took me a little bit to get used to sort of having a low bed like that and not like a really high headboard. Like I thought for some reason it was a really high headboard. Me too. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, I, but I love it. It's beautiful, super comfortable, easy to get in and out of because it's low. I don't have to worry about my daughter falling off. <laughs> it's not very far to fall when she's jumping on the bed like she mm -hmm. loves to do. So that part about it is actually really nice. And we did come up with an option for potentially if she yeah. ever does change her mind, what we can do to alter it, to raise it up. So yeah. we could actually add a different bracket onto the back, put another beam back there to, mm -hmm. not a beam, this isn't a house, a board <laughs> to protect it so that it like holds it into there. And then yeah. we can raise the headboard and actually mount it to the yeah. wall so that the nightstands could be up. Yeah. If you change your mind and, honestly, and at, you want to do at, that. At first I thought, oh, that's totally what we should do. We should totally mm -hmm. raise this up. But honestly, after being in the space and and now that we're like done with the decorations, I feel like it works and I don't think I need that. Good. But we'll see. We'll live in it a little longer. Exactly. And that's the thing about design and doing it yourself. Things can always change down the road. We've already talked about a couple yeah. things that she might switch out eventually when she finds something that she likes better or I find something that I think she might like better and it'll More kind of that. shift and change. And that's just the way life is. A couple of the intimidating parts about starting a room makeover for me was there were a couple weird spaces in the room and I was like, I don't even know what you do with that space. I don't know, like, how do you start? It's like, you can come up with these ideas and then you change your mind, you can't pick. And then it was hard to like really just pull the plug and start working on it myself. Thank God for Laura. <laughs> we have a little nook <laughs> up in the ceiling, like a little ledge. And I was like, I don't know what you put up there. I was like, do you? Plants? That was yeah. the first thing I thought of. Yeah. I know a lot of people have commented that they collect dust and yes. that's just a fact of life. Dust happens and yeah. you can either opt to have like empty space with yeah. dust on it or you can have cute things with dust <laughs> on it. Dust happens, you gotta get over it. So other than the little loft nooky area, um, the, <laughs> the other spot nook. I didn't know what to do with is above our back door, there's like a little window and instead of putting any kind of like curtain on it, they just painted over the little window of <laughs> the there. purple. The purple. To go with the rest of the room. The purple. So I opted to do peel and stick wallpaper. It was super easy. It took me about five minutes to actually put up. So we did that for now and I think it's a great solution. I and I have a it. feeling it's gonna stay there for a it's long time. Stay. It's a really pretty pattern and we can always change that out later. That's yeah. part of why I did the peel and stick. I think it'd be cool to actually take out the glass and put in a really cool stained glass. And then you can actually have stained glass. Do any of you out there do custom stained glass and like commissions? Pull off a Monet stained glass. Even if it was just <gasps> Monet colors. I those are the colors. Love. These are the colors. Right, this is this for. is happening. Ooh, I love that. This is happening. I love that. Okay, so that's I like gonna the happen. Stick on. I like the stick. Honestly, like it looks really good. It was a good, easy, quick, simple fix. So yeah. don't don't forget about little things like peel and stick wallpaper. If you have, say, a cabinet or a random door that goes to an attic, and you just want to pizzazz it up, you don't just have to paint it the same color as the wall. You can always put some kind of a peel and stick wallpaper on it, or even just a portion of it, just to make it kind of a cool design feature rather than this like eyesore in the space. I'm just surprised you didn't want to paint it black. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm really excited about the wall sconces, even though they don't work right now. They actually have to be hardwired into the wall. And the reason I'm so excited is because I actually ordered those um, about a year ago for my kitchen to go above the sink. And I believe I got them on Etsy from Denmark. The problem was that when they arrived, they were maybe half the size that I thought that they were gonna be. And there was no way that they were gonna work for the kitchen space. And I was kicking myself for not reading the measurements better. I'm sure a lot of you can probably probably relate to that. Laura kept talking about like, oh, I got these little, they're so cute. I'm going to bring them and we'll try this. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like, I don't really need wall sconces. <laughs> like, I'm not a wall sconce person. She brought them in though. They're so cute. They're like perfect. I really think that since they're not actually hardwired to the wall and yeah. mounted right now, they're just kind of on a nail. I think it would look amazing yeah. to actually drill a hole through the headboard and mount them on the headboard. And then you could like lean over in bed and like, you know, Turn pull a little, little light. light. Yeah. If you're reading a book or something. Yeah. So that's always an option for down the road. For now, we'll just go ahead and leave them up there and you can kind of sit on that and decide yeah. if you love I them. love that idea. Um, I do think then we have to raise the headboard. I was like, I we have like a part two of this video coming in 2027. <laughs> I want to take a moment to let you tell people why you hadn't painted the purple walls because I think that this message is really important and it's also really realistic. Kind of like the reason that this took three months to complete. This isn't an HGTV show. This is me and my sister on a budget, um, trying to thrift everything secondhand. And I think that so often we look at the outside world and we look at Instagram and to TV for inspiration, but sometimes it can give you false ideas of what's realistic. I just think it's an important thing to talk about. So tell them why you had purple walls for so long. I had purple walls for so long because Honestly, when you, you buy a house and you've got all these ideas of the things you want to fix up in them, you're always going to start with like things other people are going to see, right? You're doing your powder bath, you're doing your dining room, your living room, your kitchen. You're, you're so focused on those like sort of common areas. Yeah, yeah. common areas where my friends are going to see it. And you put so much effort and time into those. And honestly, it's a lot when you have a kid anyway, right? Like trying to do a project, mm -hmm. um, any project. And I'm also the kind of person where like if I, if I, I want to do the whole thing. Like I don't want to just like mm. piece by piece. That's what I struggle with. And I know I need, and I'm honestly watching you kind of work through this room over the last few months. I feel like it's kind of given me that like motivation to, it doesn't have to be, I got the couches and the art and yeah. the decor all at once and put it all together and had this cohesive idea. You can work piece by piece and then find the other and pieces to add it. to it and build it. And I think that's one thing that I've struggled with. Um, just focusing on those common areas. So of course, our room is the last thing you're gonna work on, right? Now I'm like, this is my space. This is where this yeah. is my space. This you is where I come. You spend a lot of time here, all the time. Yeah. Well, every that's night. because you're a giver. <laughs> yeah. So we yeah. were born into six children in our family, yeah. and our mom was a giver, and so her whole yeah. life, she was pregnant forever and had raising babies forever. We're all spaced out two years. <laughs> she never had a break, and um, we grew up seeing a mom that. Um, oh my gosh, I'm gonna tear up. But we grew up seeing someone who. Um, uh, did everything for everyone else first yeah. before herself. Yeah. And that's not always necessarily the healthiest way to no. live and to be. And I think that's something that our generation has really started to learn and talk about more. Mm -hmm. But I think that you're that way, I'm that way. Yeah. We kind of give to other people and then we don't have anything left to give to ourselves sometimes, right. whether it's our design or yeah. taking a bath, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so true, so yeah. true. It's yeah. about that self care and, and having that space that you feel and that you use, it's just as important as those spaces that you spend time with with your family and friends. It is. It's just as important, maybe it is. more important. I don't know. <laughs> Either way. I mean, they're all important. Yeah. I think home design is important. I think it's important for this reason. One of the reasons I never wanted to be an actual interior designer was because I didn't want to influence how other people decorated their homes for themselves, which it turns out after doing YouTube, I've done anyways unintentionally. <laughs> but I really want to inspire people to find their own path and their own style. And so when I said yes to doing this room, I was really excited because I knew we were going to be able to make it, you know, something yeah. very fun and, you know, an exciting project. But I was also a little nervous because I didn't want to say, this is you, this is your style. Because right. it's that's for us to decide who we are and what represents our home and our style. What we love. 
Yeah, so I think that, I think it is important and I think home design is important for that reason because I think this world's crazy. <laughs> this world is wild. <laughs> and you well, need to have that space to come home to that makes you feel good, whatever that is. If it's bold red colors and wild patterns mixed everywhere, everyone should come home and feel good. So that leads me to my next question. How do you feel when you walk into the room? I haven't heard you say this yet, so now I'm excited for your answer. Are you gonna cry? Yeah. Don't cry, we're gonna like cry babies today. <laughs> We're an emotional family. <laughs> a little bit. Honestly, I just want to be in here. I, like I said earlier, like I'm brushing my teeth and I'm just staring and I'm like, <laughs> just like this angle, like it looks so good. It's just seeing a room like complete. When I've walked in here for like this whole, like we've been living through the pandemic. My husband and I both work from home full time now and it's great but also you just see all the time, like I need to do that, I need to do that. And you walk into your space and you're like, I wanna get these things done, mm -hmm. I need to. And you don't for so long because it seems so daunting and overwhelming. And now I'm in this space and it feels so good. It feels so good. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I'm glad you love the room and this was so much fun. I am so glad that we got to share all of this with you. And I'm thinking the next thing that we need to tackle is getting this girl out thrifting. I've only gone thrifting with her two times ever, right? Yeah, I think ever so. in our history of being sisters. Yeah. Not okay. So I think I'm going to drag her out and maybe I'll take you to the bins. <laughs> I don't know if I can handle the bit. Yeah, maybe that's you might not need a good to like place ease to me into it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Pretty sure you're gonna need to ease me into it. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for being a part of this journey. I hope that this has given you a little bit of inspiration to go ahead and tackle your space at home. Don't wait. Just start with the paint. If you are on a tight budget, just set a budget for each month and mm -hmm. say, I'm gonna thrift three things this month. Set aside $50 a month to thrift a vase this month, candles this month, a lighting fixture the next month. You can do it and it takes time and patience and a little bit of money, but it can be done for a really reasonable price. Not everybody has a sister like Laura who will do it for you. <laughs> Honestly, this has inspired me for other rooms in the house. I feel like, okay, I can do this. You I, can. I can do this. I like, know you can. It's not about doing it all at once. Take it step by step, get a piece, get another. Like you're so right. Just do it. Nike got it right. I do have one more question for you, sister. Okay. What are we gonna do about the purple bathroom? We'll see all of you in 2027 in part two of this episode. <laughs> I love this. Can we do my bedroom next? <laughs>